What's up, spirit souls? I hope you're having a fantastic day and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Chaitanya Das and here is where I come to talk about things like spirituality, self-development, relationships, fitness, the law of attraction and so much more. But most importantly, I talk about all these things in connection to the one known in the Vedic scriptures as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the all-attractive one, Krishna. I sincerely hope you enjoy the content. If you do, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's good karma. Also, if you'd like more information on how you can live a happier and more fulfilling life, please take a look at my website, link in the description below. There you will find wonderful resources designed specifically to assist you with that goal. Now before I jump right into it, let me roll the intro. Three, two, one, let's go. Vegetarianism. So a quick search online shows that the earliest records of vegetarianism as a concept and practice amongst a significant number of people are from ancient India, especially amongst the Hindus and Jains. Later records indicate that small groups within the ancient Greek civilizations in southern Italy and Greece also adopted some dietary habits similar to vegetarianism. In both instances, the diet was closely connected with the idea of non-violence towards animals, called ahimsa in India, and was promoted by religious groups and philosophers. According to the vegetarian society, a vegetarian is someone that does not eat any meat, game, poultry, fish, shellfish, or byproducts of animal slaughter. And in general, vegetarian diets contain various levels of fruits, vegetables, grains, pulses, nuts and seeds. The inclusion of dairy and eggs depends on the type of diet you follow as a vegetarian. The most common types of vegetarian include lacto-vegetarians, which are vegetarians who avoid animal flesh and eggs, but do consume dairy products. Lacto-ovo-vegetarians, which are vegetarians who avoid all animal flesh, but consume dairy and egg products. Then we have the ovo-vegetarians, which are vegetarians who avoid all animal products except eggs. And finally, the vegans, who are vegetarians who avoid all animal and animal-derived products. Those who do not eat any meat or poultry, but do consume fish, are considered pescatarians whereas part-time vegetarians are often referred to as flexitarians. Although sometimes considered vegetarians, pescatarians and flexitarians do eat animal flesh. Therefore, technically, they do not fall under the definition of vegetarianism. The bottom line is that vegetarian diets exclude meat, poultry, game, fish, and shellfish, while certain types of vegetarians also exclude eggs, dairy, and other animal byproducts, which of course is good because by following such a diet, even in its simplest format, one is not only contributing to its own physical health and well-being, but also assisting with the reduction of CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. Considering that the livestock industry represent nearly 15% of all greenhouse gases emissions caused by human activity. Veganism. I think we can all agree that not too long ago, the term vegan, which is used to describe the non-dairy vegetarians, was associated with a lifestyle and a diet that were actually considered to be uncool and weird. Many vegetarians also refused to associate themselves with this radical movement. The practice of veganism started a health-crazed and clubby reputation. Their diet eventually became truly admired and popular with the counterculture organizations, but it still maintained its exclusivity. These days, a vast number of vegans attempt to escape the self-righteous identity and even promote the cause of veganism as a fashionable and fun way of living. 
the quite famous vegan lifestyle is now changing from the one that was associated with self-sacrifice to being linked with meticulous fun. The people who are looking forward to being vegans must not just get attracted to the environmental benefits offered by veganism, but instead try doing some deeper research on it and have a robust reason for why to follow this practice. The diet of vegans is habitually very hard to follow and requires some advanced advice to understand and adopt. The people who are planning to become vegans not just lay emphasis on the health benefits related to the cause. The main aim is to enjoy and lead a life that is purely cruelty-free. The vegans as well believe in the fact that lower consumption or no consumption of animal goods will support more use of the plant foods by humans than the livestock, thereby helping solve world hunger. Vegans restrain from using animal products like dyes, glues, silk, leather, cosmetics, chemicals, and wool. Trading silk and wool clothing together with leather footwear for hemp as well as payless kicks used to be the greatest sacrifice by vegans. Now the vegan cloth designers offer the new aesthetic, which is made especially cruelty-free and in vogue style. Stella McCarthy, a grand fashion designer, utilizes the imitation leather along with natural fibers to introduce her clothes. A big number of people often inquire about the reasons one has to lead a vegan style of living. The very first rationality because of which the vegan lifestyle is adopted is due to the ethical factor of serving the world as a true vegan. Leading the vegan way of living helps lower down the predominantly query of animal-based items like gelatin, dairy, leather, and other goods. The companies producing these animal items and their byproducts are often ashamed of the cruelty that they perform towards the animals. Another valuable reason that helps people choose the vegan lifestyle is the health benefits that can be offered by a vegan diet. Vegan lifestyle is, as a matter of fact, a bit better when compared to others that are not vegan. The proteins that are found in cheese, meat, and other foods can likewise be included in the vegan lifestyle through intake of the protein-rich items like legumes and tofu. Even the omega-3 fatty acids in fish can be utilized in the vegan lifestyle because these fatty acids occur in flaxseed naturally. The typical vegan diet is commonly more nutritionally wealthy than the diet which revolves around intake of fatty cheese and meats. All in all, veganism proves to be a grand style of living that is made to literally respect all living things equally. Vegans attempt to respect the feelings of the animals, just like those of humans. They attempt not to utilize any type of animal product, be it fur, flesh, cocoons, honey, fiber, wax, feather, eggs, or milk. The best part about veganism is that it doesn't use the animals for the sake of their own requirements or preferences. Not even the animal's organs are utilized for any type of experimentation. Therefore, it is great to be a vegan and contribute to the health and moral development of the world. Krishna devotees. Devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, naturally have a relationship with food that is influenced by the principles of compassion, non-violence and balanced living. And therefore, they do not eat any type of meat, animal flesh or eggs. But in truth, their dietary regime goes beyond the inclusion or exclusion of certain food items. Of course, that is due to their deep understanding of material nature in relationship with who we really are and the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. You see, most people believe and have a basic understanding of karma, which refers to the spiritual principle of cause and effect. So it's not uncommon to hear people say that killing animals or causing them suffering for food and other consumable items produces quote unquote bad karma. Karma is I don't believe in karma. Because of that idea, devotees are sometimes criticized 
due to the fact that they do consume animal products such as cow milk and honey. And although that is true, without a deeper understanding of who we really are, this entire material universe, the supreme source, and the eternal relationship between these three energies, it is difficult to understand the devotee's overall behavior. In a conversation which took place in India in 1972, between A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, a prominent Acharya or spiritual master in the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, and Bob Cohen, a Peace Corp worker, which later on went on to become his disciple, Srila Prabhupada made the following comment regarding being a vegetarian. Quote, Vegetarianism is no qualification. The pigeon is vegetarian. The monkey is vegetarian. End quote. The main point, which is what we've came to learn through Srila Prabhupada's teachings, is that real devotees of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are not interested in becoming vegetarians or vegans. Neither are they in the business of converting others to veganism or vegetarianism. Devotees are simply interested in pleasing Krishna. In relationship to that, Srila Prabhupada quoted the following verse from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, a prominent Gaudiya Vaishnava scripture. Quote, Things should be accepted for the Lord's service and not for one's personal sense gratification. If one accepts something without attachment and accepts it because it is related to Krishna, one's renunciation is called yukta vairagya or actual renunciation. End quote. He went on to say that if Krishna says positively, I like these things, so as devotees of Krishna, we have to offer to Krishna what he likes, and then we will take his remnants, which is what devotees and the scriptures call prashadam, an offering of vegetarian dishes intended to please Krishna. Of course, Krishna's devotees, following Srila Prabhupada's instructions, try to adhere to the practice of cow protection, so that the milk used to prepare the food offerings is indeed coming from a cow that is not being abused for its gift. But it is important to understand and accept that even when such arrangements are not possible, because Krishna is the absolute truth, everything in connection to Him is also absolute. And in this regard, when animal products such as cow milk and honey are offered to Krishna according to His liking, not only the devotees benefit from eating that food, but everybody and everything in connection to it is also eternally benefited. Meaning, eventually, they will all come to the platform of Krishna consciousness, which puts a stop to the cycle of material birth, death, old age and disease. Unfortunately, it is difficult for a person in the bodily concept of life, meaning one who identifies the eternal self as the temporary material body, to understand these principles and grasp the idea that this is indeed real compassion. But enough of what I think about it. Let me know what you think about in the comment section below. And as always, if you want more information on how you can live a happier and more fulfilling life, take a look at my website. There you'll find wonderful resources designed specifically to assist you with achieving that goal. Also, check out our free report on the top 10 meat replacements that will provide you with the protein and nutrients your body needs. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and until next time, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Hare Krishna. Reality, supreme reality, reality is Krishna. You understand that it's a vast uh, And if you think something is not related to Krishna, that is not vast that is a vast of unreality. You understand? And that is Sivadam. Vastu Sivadam is all the species. Sivadam is all the species. Krishna is all the species. Krishna Bhakti is all the species. Not Krishna, not Krishna Bhakti, not related to Krishna. All inner species.